What's up YouTube, Will here, and today I got two new GPUs to benchmark and review. Um, one being the GTX MSI 1080 uh, Gaming X version and the GTX uh, 1070. Okay, you can see both of them, black and red, my personal favorite. Um, as you'll see when I do the room tour and review of my uh, gaming PC, a lot of it's black and red, so I'm really digging that. Um, MSI, I feel, really crushed it with these cards. Um, they both use the uh, Torx 2.0 fans. This is supposed to, what they claim, allow 22% more pressure over a conventional fan to spread out through the heat sinks. You can see with the uh, piping, it looks standard, but they, with this, uh, these cards, they went with a flattened model once it gets into the copper piping. So it spreads, disperses the heat a lot better to help cool down the card. As you can also see, we have one DVI-D, three display ports, and one HDMI out. And my personal favorite that I see becoming the norm on all cards these days is the back plate. They don't really do too much, but they do protect the, uh, the back of the card. So, you know, that dude that plays with ch eating chips all day, drinking soda, gets his oily hands on the card, could damage a component. So that definitely uh, helps when handling these cards plus personally they look cool so without further ado let's get into some benchmarks all benchmarks are going to be ran in an i5 6600k overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz on an msi z170 m5 motherboard both cards are overclocked using the msi gaming app in overclock mode which will give the msi gtx 1080 a base clock of 1.7 gigahertz and a boost clock of 1.8 gigahertz the gtx 1070 has a base clock of 1.3 or 1.53 gigahertz and a boost clock of 1.72 gigahertz the monitor we're going to be using is an asus p34 8q ultra hd monitor we we will be testing the benchmarks at 1080p and 1440p um, we are also going to use two different resolutions testing at 1440p being 2560 by 1440 which will run at 16 pi 9 aspect ratio and 3440 by 1440p which will run at 20, 21 by 9 aspect ratio to test if to see if there's any difference in frame rates. Both these cards can utilize DirectX 12 so that's where we're going to start with 3D Marks Time Spy, a DX12 benchmark. As you can see, both do a great job at running 1080p resolutions, both reaching over 60 FPS, and they also pull great numbers at 1440p resolutions, staying above 30 FPS. As you can see from the benchmarks, you're looking at around a 10 FPS difference between the 1080 and 1070 on DX12 at the different resolutions. Playing at 1440p with some adjustments should yield 60 FPS in game titles on both cards. Keep in mind that DX12 is still relatively new and that there are only a handful of games at this time that can utilize it, but these numbers are relevant and important as DX12 is definitely going to be utilized for future games. Our next benchmark is Firestrike Extreme. This is supposed to be for multi-GPU stress testing. Seeing how both these cards can destroy the original Firestrike stress test, this seems to be like the test to run now to actually put some stress on these cards. You can see at 1080p both these cards kill this test and even at 1440p both cards are pulling great number with the 1080 just dripping under 60 fps at both 1440p resolutions. As you can see the 1080p performs significantly better averaging about around 27% better performance over the 1070. Next up is my favorite benchmark, Unigen Heaven, which is a beast of a benchmark. It is running at ultra settings with tessellation on, and as you can see, again, both cards at 1080p well over 60 FPS. Moving on to the 1440p resolutions, you see both cards again performing really well. Between the two cards, you see a 17% gain in performance with the 1080 over the 1070. Moving on to actual game benchmarks, we're starting off with GTA 5. Both cards at max settings perform very well at 1080p and 1440p. The difference between the cards at 1080p did get a little weird, but when you're pulling 120 FPS, what am I going to say? I only wish that I had a 4K monitor to benchmark with at this time. That being said, with the numbers that we see here, I think you should be able to pull 60 FPS at 4K pretty easily. 
As we can also see, the 1080p is producing a 14% average increase in performance over the 1070. Moving on to Witcher 3, a very beautiful game. Since there's no built-in benchmark, I loaded a save checkpoint and ran the same route at each setting. We can see each car performed very well at ultra and high settings at 1080 and 1440p resolutions. But I think looking at the numbers, it's safe to say that if we want to run Witcher 3 at 4K in ultra or even at high settings and achieve over 60 FPS, we're most likely going to need two 1080s. Looking at these numbers, we can see that the 1080 performs 25% better than the 1070. So as you guys can see, that's the difference between the 1080 and the 1070. When it comes to picking which one's right for you, I think it comes down to the resolution that you're going to be gaming at. If you're going to only be gaming at 1080p, stick with the 1070. If you're going to go into Ultra HD in the realm of 4K, you're definitely going to need a 1080, possibly even two 1080s. Um, the prices for these come in at uh, 430 for the 1070 and 630 for the 1080. I'll leave links to both in the description. Um, with that being said, that's, that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. If you found it informative, please smash that like button. And if you uh, want to see more content from myself, please hit that subscribe button. Um, I'll be doing a review on this monitor very shortly as well as a $500 gaming PC build for my sons. And I'm going to approach the subject of if you should upgrade your computer or build one outright. This is pretty interesting seeing what we've been uh, looking at with the new Cabby Lake processors. I hope to get some of those in hand to do some benchmarking and testing with those compared to older CPUs, possibly even before the, uh, the latest series. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.